Sharing their memories of Cork Arts Theatre today are Jenny Rogers, Derek Murphy and Mike O'Dowd. Jenny Rogers and Jason Shannon, who you may recall read Digging by Seamus Heaney in the Remembrance and Reflection Strand, spent five happy years living together in a small cottage just outside of Cork City. At the time, Jenny was running Roundhouse Productions and Jason was studying and composing music. In 2016, they moved to Belgium and they now live in Switzerland with their two boys, Erskine and Harry. Jenny works part-time specialising in business modelling for creative projects. Jason is a technical specialist and creates audiovisual compositions from sound and media samples gathered from the neighbouring towns and forests. We're also going to hear uh, from Derek Murphy, who is originally from Grange in Cork and has been based and working in London for seven years. Uh, Derek enjoys a busy career and his many theatre and film credits to his name. He appears in advertising campaigns for Ladbrokes, Jaguar, Walls Ice Cream and Cadbury's. Derek is also the artistic director of DK Delight Productions. He made his debut in Tom Sawyer, a stage centre production directed by Marion Wyatt in the mid-90s in the Cork Arts Theatre. Mike O'Dowd, originally from Tralee, has been involved in Cork film and theatre since the age of 19. His stage debut was in 2011, playing the lead in the one-act play Headhunter. This was the beginning of his ongoing professional relationship with Cork Arts Theatre. Jenny Rogers told us that back in the early 1980s, Crab Lane National School drama class made its debut in the old Cork Arts Theatre. It was a very exciting time for them all as they would present their version of the Nativity at the Cat Club and Jenny played the donkey. Although she felt very well prepared because her mother, you see, had trained with Deirdre O'Connell at the Focus Theatre in Dublin and the night before the event, Jenny's mum sat her up on the counter in the small galley kitchen in the back of their home and she remembers her mother mouthing the word Stanislavski. Empowered with the secrets to acting and four nylon stockings as her donkey legs, Jenny made her way onto the stage of the cat club. She gave it everything she had. Her one line made it all around the room and she set it off with a resident hee-haw that either Linklater or Macallion would be proud of. Nothing prepared Jenny though for the feeling that came from the audience. It was warm, comfortable. She was tingling all over for the whole day and for a long time afterwards. When Jenny was asked who first comes to mind when she thinks of her times in the cat club, she fondly recalls Mary Healy of Alley Cats, of course, and her good pal Brian Steins. Then there was Cora Fenton and John Sheehy in the office for a while before the new building came along. Jenny remembers going to see The Woman in Black in the Cat Club. That was a stage centre production produced by Marion Wyatt and directed by Tony Corbett. It was during the late 80s and Jenny remembers that in one scene in particular, the woman came through the audience and she got the fright of her life. The woman, the ghost, was played by Leash Geary. Jenny has never forgotten that moment. Jenny also remembers one of the loveliest times was the night her first play, A Night to Remember, went up. Jenny was playing the lead. Liz and she were super nervous in the opening scene. But then one of the characters handed Jenny's character a cup of tea and it was hot and sweet and delicious. It was that warm feeling again, but this time in a cup. Jenny loved her days in the cat club, 
skirting down the small lane and thudding up the narrow little stairs into the bar that always smelled of stout. That's when she was with Alley Cats and then Collage de Stéphane Eva and the early days staging plays and producing Snatch. Jenny loved the feeling of the auditorium. It was always cold when you first got in, but it warmed up fast, she recalls. She loved the stage itself, how between the hall of the get-in and the lights going up lay the balance of grit and grace. Later, Roundhouse Youth served several shows in the new Cork Arts Theatre. Then Jenny liked that there were no narrow stairs or the smells of stout and the space was accessible and well laid out so that all the boys and girls could get stuck in together. The staff at that time, Marissa and Claire, she thinks, would come in and chat when they were getting in, always making them feel welcome and at home. The boys and girls would flake through the day, costume, quick rehearsal, a big mad show and award ceremony, then go home knackered. All lights, tingles, tatoes and dreams. Jenny says the intimacy of the stage is very special. But she thinks the few times she's seen one woman or one man shows there have really stood out. And she recalls Pat Kinavan's work as a super example. Finally, Jenny attended several parties in the catalogue, but says she honestly can't remember any of them. And as for getting up to any mischief during her times in the Cork Arts Theatre, Jenny replied, Of course not. Nothing but a professional work ethic at all times. Derek Murphy has many fond memories of the Cork Arts Theatre, one of his earlier memories was as a teenager in a production of A Christmas Carol, with people he feels lucky to still have as friends, but also a show that he holds dearly due to the sad passing of one of the players since that production. Derek was also a participant in a 24 hour actathon, where he clearly remembers reciting Shakespeare sonnets at four o'clock in the morning on the stage with several sleeping bodies scattered around the theatre. He also recalls hosting a comedy sketch night back before the refurbishment when there were still a few cobwebs floating around backstage. One poor girl, Derek remembers, had a deathly fear of spiders and so refused to cross behind the flats once her bit was done. Now, this was when there was no exit to the dressing rooms or away from the auditorium on stage right, and in a panic, rather than remaining in the wings on stage right for the duration of the performance, her only solution, as Derek was about to introduce the next guest, was to run right across the stage to the exit on stage left. Mike O'Dowd's first experience of the Cork Arts Theatre was as an audience member during one of the ever-popular annual in-house 10x10 events. His first experience on stage, however, was a one-act play called Headhunter, where his inexperience, he remembers, was harshly criticised, although he was humble enough to accept the criticism. He was simply happy to be part of the production and to be up on the stage. The people that Mike thinks of when the Cork Arts Theatre is mentioned are the likes of Trev Burke behind the bar, who had great time for everyone and was always happy to chat. Of course, Dolores and Jim also, who are very much hands-on in the theatre, especially during the 10 by 10 events and Writers' Week competitions. Indeed, a very fond memory for Mike was Writers' Week 2015, where a play he wrote, Seven Calls, swept the boards for himself and his cast, a previously unparalleled achievement which he is very proud of. The camaraderie and banter between the groups during the 10 by 10s 
where there was the unavoidable crossover of casts and crew backstage and in the dressing room, is something that comes to mind for Mike, as well as the support and positivity across the productions. One of his all-time favourite pieces of theatre to have been an audience member for was Wandering Star's production of Enda Walsh's Bedbound, directed by Jamie Feely and with powerful performances by Chloe O'Reilly and Dominic Moore. Of course, the little theatre with the big heart is an important part of Mike's theatrical life, as it is for so many emerging artists, as a venue that provides new writers, performers and crews a venue where you will be supported and encouraged from the moment your project begins. In the final instalment of this strand, we'll hear the memories of Shirley McCarthy and Ian McGurk. Shirley McCarthy lives in Inniscarra with her husband Ted and their two children, Lauren and Jack. Shirley has been involved in theatre and performance for as long as she can remember. Growing up in the Montforts, Shirley says she was lucky to be part of a group who were privileged to perform often in Cork theatres and beyond. Shirley has worked with the greats, too numerous to mention, and under the most talented of Cork directors and producers, Eileen Nolan, Michael Toomey, Marion Wyatt, Mary Curtin, Patrick Talbot, Donna Daly Blythe, Joan Denise Moriarty, David Gordon, Trevor Ryan, and others along the way. Shirley teaches drama and still takes to the boards when the opportunity arises. When lockdown hit, she was rehearsing a wonderful play with Ian McGurk under the direction of Mary Curtin. She was also looking forward to a panto season at Cork Opera House, once again with the wonderful Frank Mackey, but it was not to be. Shirley is truly grateful for the precious years she's had in the performing arts and looks forward to a time when we can once again be a part of the live theatre dream. Ian McGurk has been treading the boards of Cork stages for many, many years, having performed in practically every theatrical genre. Over the years, he has performed extensively with the Everyman Palace Theatre Company in productions as diverse as Oscar Wilde's An Ideal Husband, J.B. Priestley's An Inspector Calls, Hugh Leonard's Da, Brian Friel's Translations, Alan Aikburn's Relatively Speaking, and David Auburn's Proof, to name but a few. With the Cork Opera House, he has appeared in their productions of The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, The Wizard of Oz, The Sound of Music, and many more pantomime and musical reviews. Favourite roles to date include playing Bill Snibson in Killarney Musical Society's version of Me and My Girl, and also Sky Masterson in Waterford Musical Society's production of Guys and Dolls. He has a long association with Fermoy Musical Society, having appeared in their past productions of Oklahoma, Sweet Charity, Me and My Girl, Anything Goes, and more recently, The Music Man. Shirley McCarthy was trying to come up with memories of the Cat Club, but her memories are few because she hasn't performed there too often. As a very young Montfort, she spent time there working as a young teacher alongside Eileen Nolan. She vaguely remembers a lot of after-show get-togethers too in the old building, but she was very young at the time. Charlie has attended the Cat Club so many times that she feels it's such a familiar, homely place. She remembers an amazing show that she took part in called Jerry's Girls. It was a musical review based on the songs of Jerry Herman, and it was superb. She recalls singing and tapping her heart out in a hilarious song called Tap Your Troubles Away from Mac and Mabel, and a song that she fell in love with and performed for years after, which was The Song on the Sands from La Cage Fall. Those were not just the good old days, they were the best of times, and everyone involved was privileged according to Shirley. That show had a great reaction from audiences and she remembers being so sad when it finished. Shirley then went to Australia and was away from Cork for over six years. When she returned, the new theatre was there and Shirley performed in another show that stole her heart, Neil Simon's play, 
Lost in Yonkers, in which she played Bella. It was a very special role for her and she believes that playing in it in a little cosy theatre like that was unbelievably rewarding. She had never performed in a play that brought her almost into the laps of the spectators and that was a great learning experience for her. She describes it as putting you on the edge of fear where the audience can hear your heart if it beats too loudly or the slightest error if noticed. Nothing like it though, according to Shirley. Shirley has directed her students there and she loves the personal feel of the place. She went on to tell us that she recalls Marion Wyatt herself performing in The Gingerbread Lady and she remembers her control and presence on the stage there. Well, I thank you, Shirley, for those lovely words. And long may you continue to grace our stage in Cork and we look forward to you back in the Cork Arts Theatre when we open up. Ian McGurk's first profound memory of performing in the Cat Club was in Jim McEwan's production of My First Confession by Frank O'Connor. He was about seven at the time, playing the part of the young Frank. One scene that he'll never forget is in the confessional scene where Frank, Ian's character, is, given, is giving his first confession to the priest, played by the late Mick Finn. Mick, as the priest, was supposed to ask, What do they call you? And the response should have been, Michael, father. But unfortunately, on opening night, Mick Finn, instead of saying, what do they call you, decided to ask, what do they call you, Michael? Well, it certainly was a baptism of fire for a young Ian McGurk. Ian has so many fond memories of performing in the Cork Arts Theatre, but his most memorable was a production of Neil Simon's Brighton Beach Memoirs, where he played the play's child narrator and protagonist. It was his first time playing a lead character and it was an experience he will never forget. It was produced by the legendary Mrs Eileen Nolan and directed by Trevor Ryan. It is probably one of the greatest comic roles ever written for a male adolescent and it was Ian's first taste of experience the sound of an audience's laughter in direct response to the hard work of all on stage. As Ian wisely said, much of an actor's craft is that search for appreciation or approval of the work they do. Performing that role in Brighton Beach Memoirs certainly gave Ian the bug forevermore. Ian likes the intimacy of the venue the close proximity of the stage to the small auditorium makes the space very rewarding, he says. Very rewarding to play in as well as to watch something. One of the most memorable plays that Ian ever attended was Marion Wyatt's production of a play based on the Magdalene Laundries entitled Eclipse. Ian says it was superb. Other notable productions Ian was involved in in the Cork Arts Theatre were Michael McAuliffe's As, As, As Some Tall Cliff, which featured an all-star cast of Cork heavyweights that included Mon Murphy, Kevin Sheehan, Pascal Scott, Mary Foley. The importance of being earnest and lost in Yonkers with the brilliant Shirley McCarthy, to name but a few. In addition to performing... Ian was lucky enough to produce a production of his own there in 2012, Neil Simon's Barefoot in the Park, which played to a packed house for 10 nights. Ian was halfway through the rehearsal process for the Noel Coward play Present Laughter in 2020, and then the pandemic broke. However, no doubt, this project will be resumed next year when the pandemic is over.